What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the show. So I have a lot of people that ask me in the comments, what can we do to get to a point where we can see some type of a social security raise? And I always tell them the same thing. First, you need to know who your Congress people are and you need to reach out to your Congress people because they're the ones that can provide a raise for social security. It's not coming from the president. Some people think, oh, the president, he can do an executive order and, and we'll have a raise for social security. No, it has to come from Congress. And just looking at how Congress is running right now, or, or I should say how the House is not running, it should be concerning. But you do have advocates in Congress that are really pushing for an increase for Social Security, and they're pushing for reforms for Social Security. I'm gonna show you one of those people today. This is gonna be Representative Larson. I've talked about him on this channel before. We're gonna watch a clip of him from the subcommittee hearing last week on Social Security, and so that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. But first off, you guys can do me a favor. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. By clicking all, you'll get notified anytime we post a video. We do daily videos here, so by clicking the bell notification and clicking all, you should be getting updated every day. And just a reminder, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter and Threads, you can at the TEC Show Live. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So like I said, this was the subcommittee hearing for Social Security, and they talked about overpayments but Representative Larson got in there and he talked a little bit about Social Security reform. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here we go. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And I uh, especially want to thank our witnesses for uh, being here as uh, well. Commissioner, I want to thank you especially for visiting our districts, et cetera, and the care and concern that I know you have as leader of this uh, great uh, institution. Let me uh, say that uh, I share uh, some of the uh, concerns uh, that have been put forward by the chairman, but I want to put it in perspective. Uh, let's start with this year's budget, which is flat funded, and then add on top of that the proposal by our colleagues to cut that by 30%. When there's 10,000 baby boomers a day who become eligible for Social Security, when there's close to 70 million Americans who receive Social Security payments, this is not the time to be cutting. The thing that I hear most in my district from individuals when I call and go home is that they can't get in touch with a human being or a voice on the other side that can answer a question for them. And the reason they can't is because the agency has been cut and understaffed, something that people in Congress seem to be oblivious to. When we add that to the fact that Congress, whose responsibility it is to fund Social Security, hasn't enhanced the program in 52 years. 52 years. Has anything happened with inflation or in the economy in 52 years that would require the United States Congress to actually look at the benefits that people receive and adjust them, nobody gets wealthy on Social Security. On average, 18,000 per male, 14,000 per female, and in the United States of America, with our vast budget, five million of our fellow Americans get below poverty level checks. Is there any conversation about adjusting them? No. And they need to be brought up so that they're able to survive and subsist because more than 40% of all Social Security recipients, the only thing they have to rely on is Social Security. Morality demands that this committee and the Congress act, especially in these times. In this time of the aftermath and the aftermath of the, uh, the epidemic that's, that took over this country and globally, people are still recovering from that. And who was hurt by that the most? People over the age of 65. And in a time of global inflation, who's the group that's hit by the hardest by that? People on fixed income. Those are people on Social Security. <clears throat> And so 
Here we have our fellow Americans that are in the greatest need in Congress. It's great that we're looking and we hope to get answers in terms of making Social Security and every governmental agency more efficient. But we could start by having them with the appropriate personnel to make sure they're answering the questions. And even more startling and beyond that is we could actually give our fellow citizens and constituents, I have a card for everybody on this committee and everybody in Congress that details in your district how many recipients you have, what they receive, how much money comes into your district on a monthly basis for Social Security recipients. It's the why Republicans are not embracing a 23 million Americans receiving a tax cut and raising 5 million people out of poverty and then that money going right back into their communities that they represent. If you can point to me any better economic development plan in the country, I'd be glad to take a look at it, but there isn't. And this goes to the people that need it the most, and where do they spend that money? Right back in their community. And then until we address and face up to these glaring inequities, this may be great conversation, but it's not gonna fix what's wrong with Social Security. What's wrong with Social Security is Congress in action, not doing anything. And 30 years ago, excuse me, 40 years ago, in 1983, they took a look at solvency and said, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to raise the age. And what they found out in the process is that for every year you raise the age, it's a 7% cut in benefits. And my friends and colleagues on the other side are proposing raising the age to 70, which would be a 21% across the board cut, going along with the inaction by Congress that in 2033 would mean a 20% cut. That's a 43% cut to people on average who are getting $18,000 a year if you're a male, 14,000. It's long overdue for Congress to step up and take action. Sorry, I ran over, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so that was Representative Larson. Now, there's something interesting that he was talking about when it comes to communities and just helping out the economy. Just having people that are receiving Social Security, if you were to provide them with a raise, provide them with enhancements to Social Security, that money is going right back into the community because those seniors are gonna go out, they're going to spend money in the community and help build up the community, help the economy in the community. And that's why Representative Larson was saying, this is a problem that, that, that we're looking at, that we're facing right now, that would be beneficial if we had some type of social security reform, if we had some type of enhancements for social security, because these seniors are going to go and purchase things in the community. And that's one of those things where I don't care if you're a Democrat or you're a Republican, you should support that, helping out our economy. And that's something that's being overlooked here. You have a lot of lawmakers that are just looking at this and saying, well, we shouldn't have to give more money. We shouldn't have a raise for Social Security or what about inflation and all this stuff. The reality is if you provide an enhancement, which hasn't been done in 52 years, you heard him say that. If you provide an enhancement for Social Security, that money is going to go to help the community where the seniors live. As simple as that. And so we should, I mean, th this should be bipartisan. We shouldn't have one side saying, yes, we need to provide enhancements for Social Security. And then the other side saying, well, you know what, let's raise the full retirement age. And by the way, let's make some cuts to Social Security. Let's make some cuts to the Social Security Administration because they don't need the money that they have now. And I'm, I'm going to show you, because this was, this uh, subcommittee was on overpayments, I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a future video. I'll show you some different clips. But the reality is the Social Security Administration is underfunded right now. And that's part of the reason why they're not able to catch these overpayments as soon as as soon as they can. So you have people that are in situations where they owe a lot of money as a result of that. And we'll talk a little bit about, like I said, I'll, I'll show you clips of that. And when it comes to the overpayments and the collection of the overpayments, Congress can waive all that if they want. 
So it's still going to be up to Congress, even though, though the Social Security Administration didn't catch it in time, and then they realized, okay, these people owe thousands and thousands of dollars. Guess who can wipe those thousands and thousands of dollars away? Congress, and only Congress. The Social Security Administration can't do it on their own. And so I just wanted to show you, this is an advocate for Social Security. He's been doing it for years. This is a person that you should be supporting. And this is where you should be contacting your Congress people to see if they support Representative Larson, if they support the Social Security 2100 Act, because he's there to try to help seniors. He's there to try to help people who are currently receiving Social Security benefits and even people who in the future will be receiving Social Security benefits. Because like I was saying, when it comes to raising that full retirement age up, that will impact people who haven't retired yet. And you could see it, as he said, for every year you raise that full retirement age, that's a 7% cut. And those people that are waiting right now, let's say you're in your 60s and you're thinking about retiring, this could impact you because if they raise the full retirement age up, then you might not be able to retire when you wanna retire. So it's very, very important for a lot of people who are looking towards retirement. And if you're in your 50s or 60s, you, you need to be paying attention to what's going on in Congress because if some of these lawmakers have their way, they could impact you and your retirement plans. If you guys have any questions, let me know down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.